Hello and welcome everyone to another coding video. Yes, this is a coding video. I want to talk about the event system that I made for my plugin Nell. The event system comes into play in various moments in the plugin. For example, when you are hovering buttons and the state of the mouse cursor changes, which is a feature that is unfortunately not available in Studio One. Or when you are hovering a parameter and it shows you the value and also changes the position of its component. Or when you are right clicking on a parameter in order to hard code a, a value into it. But then you decide that you don't want to do that anymore so you click somewhere else. Or when you are assigning a modulation. Or when you are removing a modulation. Or when you are changing the modulator of a certain modulator slot. Or when you are changing an entire preset. <laughs> Anyway, now we're here in the code base of a new plugin that I just started to work on. And it's not exactly the same as in Nell, but I'm just trying to rewrite every time I make a new project in order to fine tune it and improve it piece by piece. So this is the current state and I will show you how it works. I have an event namespace and the first thing in it is an enum class that contains all the different kinds of events that can be part of the event system and at the moment there are not a lot of them. Just to compare that I also have my repository opened here where you can see that even in Nell itself there are not a lot of different notification types. So sometimes people claim that event systems with notification types can be a little bit overkill because they can get so many different kinds of events that it kind of gets a little bit confusing. But I can only say that I did not reach this point with my event system yet. And yeah, I'm writing it from scratch so there is not a lot in this project yet because sometimes I'm trying to make things a little bit better. I do have some questions about my last implementation. For example, sometimes I used the, the word to describe the thing as describing what actually happens like when a connection to a new modulation is enabled but sometimes I also wrote down what should happen which is killing the pop-up and that feels a little bit inconsistent so that's something that I want to improve this time but apart from that I think this is, has a very good overview of the things that can happen. Now these are the things that can happen so far so good then I am using notify as an std function that gets the type and const void pointer, which means that every time you want to notify the event system, you can give it a lambda, where you're basically just saying, yeah, this is the type of notification that should happen right now. And I can also give it additional information about this event, if that is kind of useful in some way. Now the event system itself currently uses a mutex and a log, as you can see. I am not yet sure if this improves an issue that I had before, so please bear in mind that if this is nonsense, then just ignore it. Because the thing is, this event system only works well if all of your components have a lifetime that is not too dynamic. For example, if you're putting a lot of components into unique pointers and in these components there are also things that react to the event system. Then it can happen that you delete a component just while it processes an event and then the event system kind of breaks for an obvious reason because every time you are sending a notification into the system then it loops through all of the things that have the event system or that want to know something about the events and you notify them with the current type and stuff and yeah, if they just stop existing while you're doing that, then this loop kind of makes no sense anymore. So what I did to combat that is adding a log. So everything that is in here cannot be deleted while this loop is running. At least that's what I hope it is doing. Maybe it's not. So as I say, if this is not the solution for the problem, then just ignore me here. I still have to test that. But all in all, this is how the event system works. You're sending an event and then you are notifying every participant in the event system. Pointers to these participants, which I call events, are in my events vector. And I call them events because the event objects are on the one hand used to send new events to all of the other participants, but they are also used to receive events and then decide what should do. So. That is basically the reason why I did not call them participants, but events. They are more like a back and forth motion thingy. You can add new events to this vector or you can remove events that already exist. And the 
event itself is just a class or a struct inside of my system with different constructors but all of them have in common that they want to know a reference to the whole system. So basically every event knows the whole system of events and that's the reason why every event can send a notification that will appear in all of the other events. And some events also have a notifier and if they don't have a notifier that just means that they cannot send events themselves, they can only receive them. That is sometimes useful if a certain component does not attempt to send its own events, it only reacts to things. For example a tooltip window or something like that. I will show you an example of that. But usually they will have a notify object which is this thing as you remember and well it is just added to the system. It also removes itself automatically when the event gets deleted because the component might get deleted. So I am already preparing for this thing to maybe happen. Operating this event just means notifying the whole event system with some type and a bunch of stuff. And this is pretty simple. As you can see less than 100 lines and the logic is pretty clear at this point. It will probably get more convoluted when I improve it in case that this thing with the logs did not fix the issues with the lifetime stuff. Then it might get a little bit more complicated than that in the future. But this is the basic concept and it already improved my workflow a lot. So I can really recommend having something like that in a project. Now let's go to the examples. I made a component that basically is just the base class of all of the components that build up on it. And that's something that I like to do and that works well for me because I just like to make custom components as some of you might already know. I would not advise everyone to do because some people just don't want to deal with reinventing the wheel and don't want to write their own sliders and buttons all the time. But I like that because it makes me very flexible about everything. And also it adds the flexibility to give a utils object to every component. And this utils object can contain a lot of things. And at the moment it just has the event system, nothing else really, but I know that more stuff will come because in my other project there was a lot of useful stuff in the utility place. In Nell the utility object was used massively for a lot of modulation stuff. I'm not sure if I want to have modulation stuff in this project so it will probably look a little bit less big but I will definitely have something in it like, like the get window center thing because that is what I use for the pop-up that appears in front of the parameters when they are hovered and stuff like that. So the utility object whose reference is passed to every component has the event system and that in turn means that whenever a component is made I can just make events and that means that whenever a component is made I can just say that there is generally a notification object in it which is an event object. As you can see it is defined as event system event. So this is basically the thing that can send and receive events. And we have one of these in every component. Actually we have two of these in every component because there is just an event that should happen always regardless of what the user sets this custom event to be. And that's also a big strength of my event system that you can just have multiple event objects per component. If the constructor with the notification thing is being used then we're passing the notification thing to the notify object instead of just the event system which as I said before means that I can only receive information. But the component class has a good example of sending a notification. If we go to the mouse enter method then we see that I'm notifying the event system with tooltip updated and I'm giving it a reference to the string that is the tooltip so that when it appears to the tooltip component it can just say oh yeah let's, let's grab this tooltip and paint it. Before going to the tooltip component to show you how it looks on the other side, let's go to the plugin editor. Because as you know, the plugin editor is not based on my custom component, but based on audio processor editor. So you might ask yourself, yeah, you might have a cool event system, but it does not work for juice completely. 
it only works for your custom components. That is not entirely true, but the workflow is slightly different when you have a juice component. Basically, the first thing you notice is that you don't see my event system here in the members of this class, but you see the utility object, or you at least would see a reference to the utility object. My utility object is always in the, the highest hierarchy component of the project, so this is just the, the full object, not a reference to it, but it could be a reference, no problem. And then the mouse enter method of the plugin editor just gets the whole event system instead of having a little notification thing by itself and then it can just send the notification over the event system itself and it could also give it a string attached but i made my tooltip component in a way that if there is no additional information sent then it will automatically figure out that this is an empty string yeah and we could also have solved this differently. I could also have made an event object here as a member and then use that event object instead of pulling the event system. But I feel like that this is a very special case, the plugin editor, and it does not need to have a member just for this little moment sometimes. It would not improve the performance or anything. Now let's actually check out the other side, the tooltip component, which inherits from component and therefore has a tooltip. As you can see, it has a paint method in which it paints the current tooltip and the current tooltip is an empty string by default. Don't mind the comments, I have not implemented my color scheme stuff yet to this project because that's kind of complicated and also needs a rewrite a little bit. Anyway, what happens here is that in the constructor of my base class component, I use an inline function called make notify where I pass on the tooltip component into it. And this thing returns our notification lambda that you have seen earlier. If I go back, it was this thing. So basically I'm passing a lambda into it that determines how we want to react to certain events. And how is that? It is the following. We return a lambda and the lambda gets the tooltip component as a pointer and it has the type and additional stuff. Now, if the type is tooltip enabled, then we know that this stuff is in fact a string. So we can just get the const string pointer from this const void pointer by statically casting it into this thing. And then I pass it on to update tooltip and update tooltip asks for a pointer of a string. And there I say, if the string is null pointer, then empty string else will dereference the string and let's go. This is how it works. And yeah, now to recap this, the stream of things that happen is the following. We are in the mouse enter method of any component and we are sending a notification about that the tooltip has updated. Now we are in the events loop of the system and we are looping through all the things that have an event object. And one of these things is the tooltip component and the tooltip component actually says yes i want to react to tooltip updated and then it updates itself and then we go out of here and then we go on through the loop until we have reached the end and only then the event process has stopped now let's see this in action in this little demonstrational plugin that is very far from finished this project currently just has a button and when you see that I'm hovering the button, then you see the tooltip pop up down there. And I can also do this with the tooltip itself. Yeah, that is basically what the event system is currently doing. At the moment, it's not something that you would need an event system for, but I think that makes it just a lot nicer. Now, next up, I want to show you an example for something where an object needs to interact with an object that will exist later. We are in the modsys GUI header of my project Nell19, which is the header file where I have put most of my custom components that are basic to the whole project, like a parameter class for the knobs and stuff. And um, can can be different types of parameters actually. And also modulation draggers and everything. So the mod dragger is a class that is this thing that you can touch and drag to put it on some parameter to assign a modulation. When you have finished dragging and the hovered parameter is actually something, then all this stuff happens and a new connection is enabled. And the utility object enables the connection 
And if we go to this place in the utility object, then we see that this thing sends a notification connection enabled. And now we find ourselves at the parameter again, where I'm in the make notify inline function that defines what should happen when a new connection was enabled. And that's why I like my event system as well, because usually the disadvantage of header files only where you don't use CPP files is that you have to be very careful about the sequence in which you let things come into existence with defined and declared and how they are called it in C++. I still have to learn the lingo a little bit better, to be honest. But anyway, you get the idea. It's kind of annoying that you have to think about this sequence so much. So the event system really helps with that because you can just stop thinking about what is the sequence of things existing or the sequence of how things will start to exist. And you can start thinking more in terms of things happen and I want to react to these things, which is actually the thing that you are thinking when you are conceptualizing these kind of things. So you basically just make your code work more like the way you actually think about it, or at least that's for me. Let me know what you think.